It's the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked On Washington football team, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked On Washington Football with your host of the Locked On Washington Football Team podcast, Dave Harrison and Chris Russell. Today's episode brought to you by Rock Auto. Amazing selection, reliable low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. Visit rockauto.com and tell them Locked On sent you. Welcome. Returning listeners, new listeners, if you haven't already, please subscribe or follow, rate, and review the show. When we're not here, find Chris over the Team 983 to 7 p.m. Eastern Time, Monday through Friday, with Pete Medhurst and on the Odyssey app. Also find Chris covering your Washington football team and writing for SI.com. On Twitter, find Chris at WrestleMania61. Find me at DHarrison82. Find the show at LockedWFTPod. Chris, a lot to go over. A very big day for all NFL teams, but especially for the Washington football team, because not only did the schedule (laughs) drop, but a new addition to the team has arrived. Yeah, indeed. And the team, as in the Washington football team, has themselves a new left tackle. Now the question is whether he's the new starting left tackle, which is what I believe Charles Leto David will be when it's all sorted out in preseason and training camp uh, and all of that, they sign him to a one-year $5 million deal. Um, You know, here's what I know about Charles Leno. He's played and started 93 straight games. So, you know, uh, and, and, you know, you know, for the most part, his track record is he's available, he's durable, he's dependable, and he's going to be there and he's going to answer the bell. Now, is he great, Trent Williams? Great? Of course not. Is he... Lights out? No. Should you expect him to give up a sack or two here and there? Absolutely. But I do believe he's better than what they had. And that means Cornelius Lucas, certainly Jaron Christian. Uh, and, you know, of course, you still have Morgan Moses on the right side. But you have to kind of wonder whether Washington, um, you know, does some things overall to get younger and cheaper and, and more flexible uh, as well. But for right now, I believe he'll be the starter. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a safe bet. You know what I mean? If, if you had to go wager some money on it, I think that would be the way to go. And I mean, when, when you look at it from an NFL standpoint, uh, he's either going to take the starting job or he's going to push somebody who's already on the roster to the point where they prove they should be the starter. Either way, you're going to get better at the left tackle position. Yeah, no doubt about it. I think this is a good move. Um you know, for Washington, because, you know, he he had another opportunity at least in Denver, but as a right tackle uh, and, and, you know, maybe the market dried up a little bit because Eric Fisher went to Indianapolis. I'm sure he lost some leverage there. So that helped out Washington uh, because they get him at roughly half the price uh, that Indianapolis paid for Eric Fisher, who's also, by the way, coming off of a blown Achilles. All right, David, you mentioned two monster stories, the Leno signing and as well the NFL schedule release. And we finally have the full Washington football team schedule. And I'm going to run it down, and then we're going to get your reaction to your favorite game and the game that you're most looking forward to and most excited about. Start week one against Justin Herbert and the Los Angeles Chargers, FedEx Field, 1 o'clock Eastern time, again, week one. Quick turnaround, but back home again uh, against the New York Giants on Thursday night football. So two home games to open up the year, followed by two road games at the Bills. So good weather, uh, late September in Buffalo. Going to be chilly, but not going to be bad. At the Falcons, then home for two consecutive games versus the Saints, no Drew Brees, and Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs, followed by... Two road games. This is a little tricky. At Lambeau Field and then at the Denver Broncos, followed by the bye week in week nine. They come out of the bye week and host the Super Bowl champion, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Of course, you can listen to David on the Locked on Bucks podcast with Jim Jarko uh, and as well, BucksNation.com. So you have that in week 10. Then it's the Ron Rivera return to Charlotte reunion bowl. Week 11 at Carolina. Thanksgiving week. They don't play on Thanksgiving, which they love to do. They don't even play on the Sunday. They host Russell Wilson and the Seattle Seahawks on Monday night football. And then a short turnaround and a long road trip out to Vegas for the Las Vegas Raiders in week 13. And then they finish up the season with five straight games in the division against the Cowboys at home 
at the Eagles. That game may be on a Saturday. We're not sure yet. Week 16 at the Cowboys, currently scheduled to be a Sunday night football game. Week 17, final home game of the regular season against the Eagles. Week 18, again, remember, 17 games this year at the Giants. So, I just threw a mouthful at you uh, there, David. What game are you most excited about? Uh, I think the game I'm most excited about, honestly, is week three in Buffalo against the Bills for a multitude of reasons. For one, uh, I retired out of the Army out of upstate New York, so I have a lot of friends. I know a lot of people that are diehard Bills fans, and you know, anytime you have a chance, kind of mix it up with some of your buddies and all that stuff, it's always a great time. So it'll be really fun to kind of catch up with them and, and get their thoughts on the game and, and stuff like that. Number two, it's the first time that this team really has a chance to show that they need to be taken more seriously. I think that a lot of people are underselling the Washington football team. Again, they kind of say they backed into the playoffs last year if Dak Prescott hadn't gotten hurt, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Opening against the Chargers and the Giants, it's great. If you can start off 2-0 there, that would be wonderful. 1-1, one one, you can still live with that. Um, but that's not going to get you on the national playoff contender radar. The Buffalo Bills just got off of a season where they went to the AFC Championship game. They're trying to take another step towards becoming the best team in the AFC, knock off Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs. If the Washington football team comes into Buffalo, into their house, upstate New York, and beats them, that is going to put WFT on the map in a very real way. So it's a huge opportunity for Ron Rivera's team and one that having two weeks to kind of run up to it, plus hopefully three preseason games that go fully you know, to plan, is, is a game that I think, one, they can actually have a fighting chance to win on paper, Two, it's going to have the opportunity for Ryan Fitzpatrick to show his veteran leadership over the young quarterback, Josh Allen. So I'm looking forward to that matchup first and foremost. Well, that's a good call. You also mentioned the preseason there. We found out that they're taking on uh, the Patriots, the Bengals, and the Ravens uh, as well in the preseason. Not that that's super important, but it is important. The game that I'm most looking forward to uh, is in Las Vegas. Uh, yes, short week. Everybody's going to be exhausted from the Monday night game at home against Russell Wilson and the Seahawks. That's going to be tough. And then the quick turnaround to Vegas team will probably have to leave on Friday evening to go out to Las Vegas. But, you know, just the spectacle. I'm going to try and make a road trip out there uh, and 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 uh, and spend the weekend in Vegas. Check out that new stadium, Allegiant Stadium. Uh, that was just really kind of the foundation the last time uh, I was in Vegas. So I'm looking forward to that game probably the most. And I think it'll be a good test for them uh, against John Gruden, uh, Mike Mayock, and Derek Carr, presumably, and the Raiders. So that's the game I'm most excited about. All right. So coming up, we will have more reaction to the 2021 NFL schedule for the Washington football team, including the toughest stretch. And we'll talk about the bye week and where it landed uh, and some primetime games. David and I will go over all of that. Good to have you with us right here on the Locked On Washington football team podcast. I'm Chris Russell along with David Harrison, and we are here for rockauto.com. You know, whether you have an old car, new car, foreign or domestic, whether you need a minor or major part, there's only one place we tell you about them all the time. One place, one stop shopping, and you don't even have to go anywhere. You can do it from your couch, your kitchen table, your bed. You wanna do it somewhere else? Have at it, rockauto.com. That's right, rockauto.com. Why go anywhere else? And again, you don't even have to really go anywhere to start. You just go to rockauto.com and do it from any browser, your phone, obviously. You save money, 30, 40, 50%, depending on the part. Uh, You're not going to see any of the local mechanics get advantages and discounts that you don't get based on their relationship, based on buying in bulk and volume. Nope, you're going to get a great price on whatever part you need for your car or truck. And this much you should know, rockauto.com is a family business serving auto park customers for 20 years. Go to rockauto.com right now. They have everything you need. And when you go to rockauto.com, make sure you write locked on in there. How did you hear about us, box? So they know we sent you amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car or truck will ever need. Rockauto.com. 
What's up, everybody? David Harrison here of the Locked On Washington Football Team podcast. I actually just retired from the Army, and while that was a very exciting moment in my life, it also meant uprooting my family one last time. And not only that, but we moved in the midst of COVID, so finding the place that we really wanted to live wasn't as easy as it usually would have been, so we actually have moved a second time. And of course, every time we've had to wonder, is all of our stuff going to fit with our new house? Did you know that people who live in cities move six to eight times before they even hit their early 30s? That's why you've got to check out Feather. Feather is a furniture rental company designed for people who want to feel at home no matter how often they move. Furnishing one bedroom can cost upwards of $6,000, but with Feather, you can furnish a bedroom with high quality, beautifully designed furniture for the cost of your monthly utility bill. Their delivery team brings furniture directly to your home in as little as seven days. They handle all the heavy lifting so you can go from an empty apartment to a fully furnished home without lifting a finger or assembling anything. And it's not just furniture. They have rugs, lamps, wall art, and more. What if you move to a new place with a different layout? No problem. You can easily get furniture that works for any space. Plus, by renting from Feather, you're choosing a sustainable alternative to fast furniture that won't end up in landfills. I remember vividly having to take time off of work or away from family events or social events that I wanted to attend just to wait for several furniture deliveries coming at different times throughout the week, but you don't have to go through that anymore. Try a new way to furnish your home right now. Feather has an exclusive offer just for Locked On listeners. If you go to livefeather.com right now and use the promo code Locked On, you'll receive $300 off your first month. Again, that's livefeather.com and use our promo code Locked On for $300 off your first month. All right, this is the Locked On Washington football team podcast, along with David Harrison at D Harrison 82 at D Harrison 82. I'm Chris Russell uh, at WrestleMania 621. You can follow the podcast at Locked WFT Pod and keep those voicemails coming. We're going to have one coming up later on in the show, 301 615 3577. If you want to leave us a voicemail, locked WFT pod at gmail.com. All right, David, let's get to it. The toughest stretch of the 2021 regular season schedule for the Washington football team in your eyes is? Uh, you know, it's it's still, it's got to be that kind of mid early part of the season where you have the matchups against the Saints, the Chiefs, the Packers, and the Broncos. And I know the Broncos are kind of like the one off in that grouping and even the saints without drew Brees, like are they really going to be the saints you know and by week five we'll have a better picture of that so you know this time you know two three months from now or whatever when we actually get into the season that is uh, i may change my tune on that but the saints you know they had a defense that was a little underrated better than a lot of people gave them credit for not you know top in the league by any means but still a decent enough defense and then offensively they've got enough weapons they've got michael thomas alvin Kamara. They've done some good things uh, to add to that team. And listen, you know, coming from someone who's covered Jameis Winston for every year except for one of his NFL career because he was in New Orleans last year, and I don't cover the Saints, um, he's he's a very effective quarterback, a very uh, a competent quarterback, I'll say. And I know a lot of people are probably laughing at that, so I'll give you a second to stop laughing. Um, listen, he makes a lot of mistakes in his career, got that. The question surrounding Jameis is and it will be how much did he really learn from Drew Brees and Sean Payton because not for nothing, but when Ryan Fitzpatrick was in Tampa and he had to start at the beginning of that one year because Jameis was suspended, he kind of said the same thing. He said, you know, sitting back, watching Fitz get ready for the game, watching how he processes the field and all that stuff. As a gunslinger, I learned a lot about how he processes things that'll help me as a quarterback. Then he stepped on the field and it was the same old James. And eventually you have the 30 for 30 season and now he's no longer in Tampa. So we've heard this song and dance from Jameis before. The question is going to be how much did he actually learn? I think the difference here is one, Ryan Fitzpatrick is not a Hall of Famer. Drew Brees obviously is. And Drew Brees is not a gunslinger. He has, you know, he, he'll take some some risks and all that stuff on his own. But he's not that gunslinger mentality that Jameis has, that Ryan has. So he's been learning from a guy who plays the game a lot more conservatively. And he saw him have some of that success. He knows the career. Uh, Drew Brees, one of the quarterbacks that, that Jameis idolized as he was coming up as well. So that's going to be really interesting. If Jameis becomes a smart quarterback, right, then he can be very dangerous. So that Saints game on the surface might seem a little bit easier than usual, but I wouldn't get to, get to that point just yet. Chiefs, obviously, Pat Mahomes, all that stuff. Packers, again, if Aaron Rodgers is still there, which I believe he will be, but you know we'll see what happens in the next few months. Uh, if that's an Aaron Rodgers-led team, obviously that's a tough competition. So, I mean, really you have the potential of having three legitimate playoff contenders back-to-back-to-back. To back to back. Then you're hitting the road to go to Lambeau, and you're coming off of that going to Denver 
uh, where it's always hard to play and everything else. And you've got the Denver Broncos. And I like Teddy Bridgewater. So, you know, we'll see what they make of that. Or maybe Aaron Rodgers will be there. They might face Aaron Rodgers in, with the Denver Broncos. So, you know, that stretch right there before they get into the bye really seems like it, it's probably an underrated toughness, but it really seems like a tough stretch of, the, of their schedule. Yeah, and, and, and you know, like for me, I, I mean, again, the, the easiest thing for me to say would be five straight division games to end out the year. And clearly that's where your path to the playoffs will probably be won or lost, right? Because only playing the Giants in the first 13 weeks of the season leads to, well, you make or break time, right? I mean, again, you can win or lose the division. Uh, and and maybe they're a wild card team and not a division. We'll have to see how things shake out. But uh, I mentioned the game that I was most excited about going out to Vegas. I think that's for kind of selfish reasons, if I'm being honest with you. Uh, I, I mentioned, you know, re- preceding that, they have the Seahawks on Monday night football at home. And then again, a short turnaround and to go out to Vegas. And yes, Vegas is not Oakland. So, I mean, I guess you get a little discount in terms of the mileage there, but it's still a long trip. It's Still four hours or so on a short week. That, uh, and to me, then the Packers and Broncos, week seven and week eight, back-to-back road trips again there, and two longish road trips. I worry about that stuff. I worry about a team being physically tired, David, and mentally tired and jet-lagged. And I wonder, I wonder with the tight, you know, because of the two home games and because the eight and the nine, I wonder if the back-to-back road games and long trips uh, in that sequence there, and as well the short week between the Seahawks at home and the Vegas Raiders, uh, I wonder if that comes back to bite Washington uh, in the in the backside. So that that is my concern uh, in, in in that particular area there for the toughest stretch. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, that that is, I don't know if that, you know, I'd have to do a lot of research and I don't know, you know, uh, if that's ever happened before. I mean, that's amazing to have five of your six divisional games to close out your season. I mean, that that's that's intense. Uh, I think what it does, though, for Washington football team fans, I mean, you know, there, there are no guarantees in this life, and, and especially in the National Football League as a fan or as a player, you never know what's going to happen. But even if, you know, let's just say, you know, knock on wood, it doesn't happen, but the wheels fall off of this thing and just go, it just goes horribly wrong, the Washington football team is going to have a huge say in what happens in the NFC playoff picture and the NFC East, specifically just because of how the schedule is laid out. Like, no matter who is leading that division, whether it's the Cowboys, Eagles, Giants, or Washington, that last five weeks that Washington is involved with and intertwined there is going to be huge, and Washington's going to be at the center of all of it. No doubt. I'll give you a quick note. I don't know how often it's happened around the NFL. I'm still doing research on that. Uh, but according to Washington football team PR, uh, Washington, you know, embarking on that stretch of five consecutive division games to close out the year, it's the first time the team will play five straight games of any sort against a division opponent, uh, meaning not just to close the season, five straight games against a division opponent since 1970. That's 50 plus years ago. Yeah, and of course, with all this, Chris, uh, the Washington football team has their bye week in week nine, uh, and the NFL schedule makers apparently are friends of mine because so do the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So both the teams that I cover have bye weeks in the same week, which means I actually get a week oh. to just be a fan of the game, sit back and watch my red zone or do whatever I want to do. I might go catch a game. There's plenty of, of stadiums that? nearby. I might go catch a game and just be a fan in the stadium, you know, drink a beer or something and, and high five some other fans. I don't know. We'll see what happens. But week nine bye. Uh, we both predicted or you, or you could do a, some some honeydew list type stuff no not at all I, that's going to be a vacation week for me uh, <laughs> <laughs> so when we did our schedule prediction which i think we both did horribly wrong our, uh, yes. <laughs> uh we both predicted very very early bye weeks for this team right. um you kind of went off of history i kind of went off i think the nfl is going to want to make washington prove they are indeed a playoff team to get back into the dance which i mean to end the season with five divisional games you could say that's what they're doing right there, but they end up with a week nine bye, pretty you know right smack dab in the middle. So I mean, what what are your thoughts on that week nine bye for the team? 
I mean, you you probably can't ask for any better than that, quite honestly, in a 17-week schedule, right? It's halfway in between. Now, one thing that I would always caution and remind people of, you know, just because it's halfway through the schedule, it's not really halfway through the NFL season calendar. And what I mean by that is people forget about this because – People aren't as invested in it, but there's now three preseason games and there's two weeks of training camp before that. And usually like a week and a half, almost two full weeks from the final reg, uh, preseason game until the first regular season game. That's about a week and a half or so. So what I, I guess what I'm getting at is really when you look at a week nine by, you have eight regular season games, but you also have three preseason games plus a couple of weeks of training camp on top of that. So it's really more than just right halfway down the middle. Yet, that being said, I think you'd rather have the buy as late as possible because your body is more beat up, your body is more worn down. And week nine is not the latest possible, David, but it's certainly better than having a week three buy or a week four buy or a week five buy. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I kind of go back to, my military experience, right? And, and any veterans out there listening will kind of get it, especially if you deployed, you know, if you deploy for like 12 months, 15 months, what have you, you get an R&R break at some point, you get to go home for two weeks and, and kind of unwind and, and, and reset and then come back with your mind more clear. And my first deployment, I did mine at like, I think it was like five months, you know, out of 13 months, I did mine at five months and came back from that. And, and, that was way too early. So when I did my second one, I did everything I could in my power and I actually arranged it to where uh, I actually did my break at nine and a half months uh, of a 12 month rotation. So by the time I got back from that, basically I was back for a couple of weeks and my replacement came in. I started training my replacement to replace me. So essentially my time was done and that worked out much better because you get to stay in the mode and then you get to kind of re-energize right at the moment to get to the tail end of it. So, I mean, this is this is better than, you know, week four, week five, obviously. I think probably week 11 is like that sweet spot, you know, if you, if you could pick if, if you could pick it. But week nine, I mean, you can't complain about that. And then, obviously, Chris, uh, three primetime games. You mentioned that week 15 Eagles game uh, that they've already kind of pre-arranged to be a little bit, a little bit flexible. So that could end up being a fourth primetime game. And uh, then who knows? I mean, obviously, week 17, week 18, you know, if we end up in another situation where it's a, it's the Giants and Washington vying for that for that title spot, that could be a primetime game as well. What do you think about the primetime games that they're promised as of right now, and then the possibility of having even more? Yeah, I mean, two division games. Now we should point out it's 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 possible that the December twenty sixth game at the Cowboys could be flexed out of the Sunday night NBC window, uh, because normally that's when NBC has the right to flex Sunday night games. So we should point that out, but with it being against the Cowboys, a traditional rivalry, it's very likely to stay. You mentioned that week 15 game the week before. So, you know, they could play that game on a Saturday late afternoon, Saturday evening in Philadelphia. We don't know. It could still be on a Sunday again, depending on how the two teams are uh, doing the early uh, Thursday night game. Look, if you're going to play a Thursday night game, you'd much rather, I think, play it earlier in the year than late in the year when your body's beat up. Uh, so that to me is a bonus. And then, like you said, we'll see about some more flex scheduling. Um, you know, all in all, I thought maybe they would have four naturally scheduled primetime games, as it turns out, three in a TBD. So right in that general neighborhood. Yeah. Overall, I don't think it's a bad schedule. Some interesting parts about it and, and definitely will. Uh, have a, a, huge, a huge part to see what happens at the end of the 2021 season. Of course, uh, if you think you already know what's going to happen in the 2021 NFL season, you can put some money on that because futures bets on division winners, playoff teams, Super Bowl winners are up right now at betonline.ag. The fastest and easiest way to bet on all your sports action, whether it's baseball, which is in full swing, or you've got NBA action, hockey, UFC, and MMA action. Before the next pitch, head over to Bet Online on your laptop or your mobile device. Check out all the great sporting news, sign-up bonuses, and contest information. Don't sit on the sidelines anymore. This is your chance to get into the game as teams prep for their runs to the playoffs. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit using the promo code Locked On. Bet online, your online sportsbook experts. Yeah, you're making sports bets, but are you making winning sports bets? To win consistently, you need an edge, research, analytics. It's a lot. Or you could let BetQL do the work for you. Every game, every potential bet, from winners and losers to all the sides and totals, line movement, player props, and more. All backed by BetQL's proven data and analytics. 
BetQL analyzes over 350,000 unique bets every year and rates each potential bet on a scale of one to five stars. A five star is definitely a smart bet. One star, smart money is staying away. BetQL even lets you sort all of today's games with the best options listed right there at the top of your screen. BetQL gives you access to the same information the pros use. The stuff the sports books don't want you to see. It's time to bet smarter and beat the books with BetQL. Visit BetQL.com today and use promo code PODCAST for 20% off. That's 20% off with promo code PODCAST at BetQL.com. Segment three here at the Locked On Washington football team podcast. And, Chris, we've been talking about the schedule. we talked about our favorite parts, our less than favorite parts, primetime games, bye weeks, five straight games to end the regular season in the division with NFC East opponents. Now we've got to get to our way too early, way too early record predictions. There are so many factors in this that are going to change, uh, including, unfortunately, some injuries, Maybe some trades. Aaron Rodgers maybe is facing Washington in week seven with the Packers, or maybe he's facing them in week eight with the with the Broncos. Or maybe, uh, who knows, maybe he's hosting the Pat McAfee show and not even <laughs> playing football at this point. Uh, a lot of things to happen between now and then, but we're going to go ahead and put it on record, put it on a recording, so that every Washington football team fan or fan of other team can throw this in our face at some point four or five months down the road if we're wrong. So, Chris, let's start with you. Let's get a... Way too early record prediction for the Washington football team. Yeah, you forgot the one other scenario on Aaron Rodgers. He could be heading back to Lambeau Field with the Washington football oh. team oh. for that particular game. Um, I know we've covered that, and obviously both of us are are, are against that trade for the most part, but uh, we'll leave that for a different discussion. So I'm going to go with this weird, wacky, wild, wonky 17-game schedule, and it's messing all the symmetry of the numbers up. I'm going to go with 9-8, and eight, David, for the Washington football team. I think they make the playoffs. I don't know if it's by the division or by wild card. I mean, I think the division's clearly going to be better this year, and that five-game stretch, obviously, at the end is certainly going to be daunting, as well as the other stretches that we talked about. Listen, I think the whole key is – when you open up with two games at home and you're dealing with an eight home game, nine road game schedule, that means you have to go 2-0 and out of the gate, in my opinion, in order to put yourself in a good position to win nine or ten games uh, under this format, especially when you're talking about first-place opponents uh, and an extra first-place opponent on the road, as you mentioned, in Buffalo. So... To me, it's all about winning those first two games against the Chargers and the Giants. If they can do that, then I think maybe they can get to 10. I think reasonably they probably split those two and they wind up at nine. I suppose I could see eight and nine. I don't see much less than that unless things go horribly wrong uh, with injuries, as you mentioned, which, again, nobody can control. But I know this talent and this team and this roster and this organization and this depth chart, I know they're better. I know they're better. And I know they're more equipped to handle this schedule. And Ron, trust me, trust me on this, guys. Ron Rivera, the first thing he said to us when the offseason started is, hey, we've got a first-place schedule. He knew it right away, and he knew it, and that was one of his big missions this year, to improve this roster to absorb that challenge. Yeah, absolutely he did. And you know what? Last year uh, around the playoff time, what did he say? He said, we're playing with house money and we're aware of it. Well, guess what? Now it's time to settle up, pull up to the table, and put your chips on there, uh, play your cards down. And he's definitely got this team in a position on paper to be very, very competitive. I like what you said. I agree with you for the most part. I think that you have to win the games you're expected to win. Like I expect them to probably be favored over the Giants, especially in that week two matchup. You look at teams like you know, like the Panthers, the Falcons, probably going to be favored in those matchups. The Broncos, you got to come out of those favored matchups with the wins in order to get to where you, I think they're going to be, which is ten and seven. And, and I think that the division is uh, much improved, but I still look at Washington as the best team, you know, all in all in totality in this division. And again, barring you know any injuries or anything like that. Well, Chris. Those are our way too early record predictions. Everybody feel free to record those, write them down so you can you can tweet at us about them later if we're wrong. Uh, hopefully we're wrong 
in, in the in the opposite direction they usually are. Whereas this team, maybe you know, I don't know, maybe they go fifteen and two. That would be pretty amazing to see. And I think everybody would be uh, very happy to see that as well. So by all means, at me if I'm five wins short. But you mentioned the voicemail line earlier, Chris, and we actually got our very first voicemail voicemail call from a Washington football team fan. So let's wrap up today's episode with that call. Hey, my name is Camion Williams. I'm calling from Watts, California. I've been a diehard uh, Redskins slash Washington football team since 83. So five at that time. Uh, all my family was uh, Raider fans and you know what we did to them in uh, 83. <laughs> but uh, I'm just calling and say, hey, I love the show. I've been listening to it forever, even before David got there. Um, Chris, you're the man to me. I I, I like your charisma. I, I like the, the energy you bring, you know, the quirkiness that you, I would say, you know, you bring. And just adding... Uh, David to the show, it's like just made it even better. It's like you still got your your quirkiness, that excitement, and David brings that almost like seriousness and facts. And you know, y'all make a great team. I love the show. And if there are some people out there saying how you know they don't like you, Chris, hey, forget them. You doing a great job in my book. Keep it up. I love y'all. Uh, always be listening. Be blessed. Be safe. And uh, I'll be listening for y'all again. Thank you. Man, that is the nicest voicemail I've ever received. Yeah, that was a good one. I, I, I greatly appreciate it. Our first one, too. That That's the way you kick it off there, too. Oh. Hopefully the first of many, though. Oh, that is great. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Uh, the kind words for listening and the nice words about David, myself, uh, the show. We appreciate it, appreciate it, appreciate it. Way to kick that off. And if you want to leave a voicemail, you can do so. 301-615-3577, 301-615-3577. Or you can email your thoughts, comments, if you prefer to do it that way, lockedwftpod at gmail.com. Lockedwftpod at gmail.com. If you have questions or a topic you want us to discuss. And of course, we remind you to get more of the sports news you need in less time with the Locked On Today podcast. Follow the Locked On Today podcast on the Odyssey app or wherever you get podcasts. Coming up on the next episode of the Locked On Washington football team podcast, David will not be with us. He's celebrating a family birthday, so we uh, wish him uh, the very best and his family and let him enjoy uh, some time. We will be joined by Ben Stevens, uh, who covers the Locked On Big Ten uh, podcast and who who hosts, I should say, the Locked On Big Ten podcast. So we will have that and much, much more. David, have a great weekend. That's going to do it for us right here. I'll be back with one more episode before the week is out. Of course, you have been dialed in to the Locked On Washington football team podcast. Locked On.